This is lab 14. This is the muscles of the forearm and hand. In this lab, we're going to be discussing the expectations for the quiz and going over all the muscles of the forearm and the hand. In this PowerPoint, if the muscle has an asterisk next to it, this means that you're responsible to know one origin, one insertion, and one action. And those six muscles are listed here. For all the other muscles in lab 14, you're responsible to know how to identify the muscle on a model, provide one action, one synergist, and one antagonist. Let's go over the six muscles that you're responsible for one origin and one insertion and discuss how these muscles are named. The supinator should be pretty straightforward. What this muscle does, it's going to supinate the hand. No surprise there. Pronator teres, again, no surprise here. This muscle is going to be pronating the hand. The palmaris longus, where do you think this muscle might be inserting? If you guessed the hand because of palmaris, that's correct. And based on this insertion, we know that this is probably going to flex the hand. Flexor digitorum superficialis. What do we think this muscle is going to do? Well, it's going to flex because it's called a flexor. And what is it going to flex? The digits because of digitorum. Opponens pollicis. Our pollux is our thumb. And so this is going to be a muscle around our thumb. And opponens, this might refer to oppose or opposition. And so this muscle might oppose the thumb. And then extensor digitorum, where do we think this muscle might be inserting? Just like in flexor digitorum superficialis, this muscle is going to insert on the digits. And it's also going to be extending the digits because of the name extensor. So the way that these muscles are named actually makes sense. And having a basic understanding of what these terms mean is, is going to help us know where this muscle is, what it does, and where it originates or where it inserts. So let's go through these muscles. If we're looking at the superficial posterior forearm, our first muscle is the extensor digitorum. When we're looking at these forearm muscles, it becomes really important to look at where the fibers are running as well as where the tendon goes. And the tendon is going to be indicated by this gray the gray part of the model. And if we look at this muscle, we can see that the tendon, the gray part, is going out towards the digits. And so this is why we have the extensor digitorum. Our extensor carpi ulnaris is going to be also an extensor. What is it going to be extending? It's going to extend the carpals because carpi and we've got two bones in our forearm. We've got the radius and we've got the ulna. And so this muscle is on the ulna side or the medial side. And so that's why we call it the ulnaris. Now we're looking at the superficial anterior forearm. And the first muscle that we're interested in here is indicated by the arrow. And this is the pronator teres. This muscle, we need to know origin, insertion, action. Uh, for the origin, there are two, so just pick one that you like and stick with it. Either the medial epicondyle of the humerus or the coronoid process of the ulna. There are two insertions as well. The first is the lateral shaft of the radius. The second is the middle shaft of the radius. Same deal here, just pick one that you like and stick with it. And the action for the pronotaries is it pronates the hand and it also flexes the forearm. Now recall that our extensor digitorum was a extensor, and this was a muscle that was originating on the lateral epicondyle. But now we have a muscle that's gonna pronate, but it's also gonna be a flexor, and this muscle originates on the medial epicondyle. And so this is an interesting pattern that we wanna keep track of for the rest of this AV lecture. Okay, we're still on the superficial anterior forearm, and now we're going over my favorite muscle in the forearm. And that muscle is the palmaris longus. 
Um, this is a muscle that we need to know insertion origin action. Our origin is medial epicondyle. Our insertion is the palmar aponeurosis. And our action is it flexes the hand. Now, if we look down um, at, the, at our wrist in this model, you can see there's a bunch of muscles. They're all, the tendons are all going in the same direction, inserting somewhere in the hand or in the phalanges. And students can get kind of confused by all the stuff that's going on in this area. But the palmaris longus is unique. And if we follow this tendon down, follow that gray part down, we notice that this tendon is actually superficial to this white band here called the extensor retinaculum. And this is a feature that is unique to the palmaris longus. And it makes identification of this muscle on a model extremely easy. Because all you need to do is follow the tendon down, and if it is superficial to that extensor retinaculum, you know that it's the palmaris longus. Now, what exactly is the extensor retinaculum? Well, you can think of it as a rubber band in your wrist, and it's made of connective tissue, dense regular connective tissue. And what the extensor retinaculum does is it effectively holds tendons in place. It, it wraps around the wrist and it holds the tendons that insert into the hand and the phalanges in place. But it doesn't hold the palmaris longus tendon in place. And so this is a very reliable feature to identify this muscle. Now also, let's recall that on our previous two slides, we had two muscles that were doing opposite actions and they were inserting on different parts of the humerus. And here we again have a muscle that is going to be a flexor. It's going to flex the hand. And we see that it's originating on the medial epicondyle. So we're already starting to see here some overlap with origins. And this should you should remember this to make your studying easier. But also more importantly, we're getting this pattern here where muscles that are flexors are originating on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and muscles that are extensors are originating on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. We're still in the superficial anterior forearm. We have a new muscle here, and it is the flexor digitorum superficialis. Now this is a muscle that we need to know origin, insertion, action, and just based on what we established thus far in this AV lecture, Let's see if we can make some reasonable guesses as to where this muscle originates, where it inserts, and what the action is going to be. So first, the muscle is flexor digitorum superficialis. So let's get a guess on what the action might be. And a reasonable guess would be it flexes the digits because of flexor digitorum. Now, if it flexes the digits, where do you think this muscle is going to be originating? We've already established that muscles that extend are going to originate on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And so muscles that flex are going to originate on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And that's a reasonable guess, the medial epicondyle. And then if the muscle is flexing the digits, where do you think the insertion point is going to be? Well, it's probably going to be somewhere in the phalanges because that's how we're going to get the action of flexing the digits. So let's see how we did. Well, there we go. We see origin. The first is the medial epicondyle. And again, this fits our pattern that muscles that flex in the forearm originate on the medial epicondyle. There are also these other two, the proximal ulna and proximal radius. You can pick one of these three origins and stick with it for your studying. Either one is fine. We were correct about the insertion. It's the middle phalanges, two through five. So that includes your index through your pinky finger. It does not include your thumb. And then we were correct about the action as well. It's going to flex the digits, two through five, but it's also going to flex the hand.
Still looking at the superficial anterior forearm here. And the next muscle we've got is the flexor carpi ulnaris. If we break this down, uh, what is this muscle going to do? It's going to be a flexor, so it's going to flex something. Uh, what is it going to flex? Carpi, that refers to the carpals or the wrist. So it's going to flex the carpals. And ulnaris means that it's going to be a muscle that is superficial to the ulna. So this muscle is going to be medial in our forearm. And the action for this muscle is it's going to flex the hand and adduct the hand. And the other muscle we've got here is the flexor carpi radialis. And this is the same deal here. We've got a flexor that's going to flex the wrist. And this time it's going to be lateral in the forearm because radialis refers to the radius. And this is a lateral bone in the forearm. So flexor carpi radialis, lateral wrist flexor muscle in the forearm. Okay, we've got a different view now. We're looking at the superficial lateral forearm muscle. And the first one we have is the brachioradialis, shown there. This muscle, uh, the name of it means that it's going to be a muscle that's both in the arm and the forearm. Brachio refers to the arm, and then radialis means the radius. So this muscle is going to be spanning from the arm into the forearm on the radius side or the lateral side of the forearm. And the action of this muscle is that it flexes the forearm. Second muscle shown here is the extensor carpi radialis longus. And this muscle extends and abducts the hand. And then we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis. And this muscle also extends and abducts the hand. All right, and now we're back to the um, anterior forearm, but now we're looking at deep muscles. And the first one we have here is the flexor digitorum profundus, and this is a muscle similar to our flexor digitorum superficialis, except this is going to be a deep muscle now, and that's what profundus means. If we think back to those first few AV lectures, where we learn those anatomical terms. Profundus means deep. And the action, just like the flexor digitorum superficialis, this muscle is going to also flex the phalanges, or the digits, and also flex the hand. Our next muscle is the flexor pollicis longus. Every time we see the word pollicis, this refers to the thumb, and this is a flexor muscle, so this is going to flex the thumb. And the final muscle here is the pronator quadratus. And from the name, we should get an idea of what this muscle is going to do. It's going to pronate the hand, just like the pronator teres. And this is just a, a smaller pronator muscle that is found in the wrist. We're still looking at deep muscles, but now we're on the posterior forearm. And the muscle we have here is the supinator. And this is a muscle we need to know origin insertion in action. Now this muscle is going to originate on the lateral epicondyle. And if we, we think about this, the antagonist muscle for the supinator, and that's the pronator teres, remember that this muscle originated on the medial epicondyle. And so now we have a muscle that's the antagonist of the pronator teres, but it's originating on the opposite side of the humerus, the lateral epicondyle. We also have an origin on the anterior ulna. Um, two origins, remember, just pick one and stick with it for the quiz. And then for the insertion, we have the proximal radius. And as the name suggests, the action of this muscle is going to supinate the hand. We have some more muscles of the deep posterior forearm. First is the extensor pollicis longus. This is a muscle that is going to extend the thumb. Remember, anytime we see the word pollicis, that refers to the thumb. We also have the extensor pollicis brevis. Brevis just means uh, short, so this muscle is going to be relatively shorter or smaller than the longus. 
And again, this muscle is also going to extend the thumb. And then we have the abductor pollicis longus. And as the name suggests, this muscle is going to abduct the thumb. Then our final muscle here is this muscle in the thumb. And this is the opponent's pollicis. We do need to know origin and insertion and action for this. This is a pretty easy one. Um, opponents, that means that this is going to be a muscle that opposes. And we see this word again, pollicis. That means thumb, so the action opposes the thumb. The origin is the trapezium, and the insertion is the first metacarpal. So I just want to offer some study tips uh, moving forward after this AV lecture. We had basically two groups of muscles um, in lab 14 here. We had a group of muscles that were either flexors or pronators, and then we had muscles that were extensors or supinators. And we sort of highlighted these patterns as we went along, but I just wanted to, to make sure that we're clear on these patterns that emerged from this, from this AV lecture. For our flexors, these muscles originated on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And those were the pronator teres, the palmaris longus, and the flexor, flexor digitorum superficialis. But our extensors, they originated on the opposite side of the humerus, the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And that was the supinator and the extensor digitorum. So we had a lot of overlap in this AV lecture with where these muscles originated. And on a quiz, this should make your studying much easier. If it's a flexor, you should know that it's going to originate on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And if it's an extensor, this muscle is going to originate on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus.